Good morning, and welcome to online worship here at the First Presbyterian Church in Goshen, New York. We will continue these online services for the foreseeable future, especially for those of us those of you who can't join us in our outdoor worship services, which we are continuing as long as the weather holds, and we will be looking to returning to indoor service in our sanctuary at some time in October. In the meantime, it is my pleasure to welcome ruling elder Lynn Costa, who will be our worship leader this morning, and her, her biographical information can be found on the email that accompanied uh, the announcement for this service. I've known Lynn for several years, and I'm sure that you will enjoy her message. And it's my honor now to introduce Elder Lynn Costa. Lynn? Thank you, John. And welcome. Welcome to our service of worship today. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, the church family. Isn't it wonderful that we get the opportunity to worship, even this way, virtually? It's great to be with you today. Our call to worship this morning is based on Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6 and 37 through 45. If you have the bulletin, please feel free to read along with me, and if not, listen to these words. Give thanks to God, who spread a cloud for a covering and gave fire to light the night, who opened the rock and water gushed forth and flowed through the desert sands. Seek the Lord and the strength that only God can give, a presence that continually abides. We will remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and the judgments God made. Let us worship God. Amen. And as we put our hearts in the framework of confession, let's think about confession as that bridge back to God, the bridge that gives us the opportunity to be in full relationship with our God. And if you have the bulletin, please uh, follow along. And if not, hear these words. The laborers were sent into the vineyard and told what they would be paid. The amount was the same, regardless of the hours they all worked. Lord, it doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem right that those who do everything should get the same fruits of the vineyard as those who work much less. But that's not how you see it, Lord. You see it so differently. Forgive us, Lord. You tell us that the gifts of your kingdom are for everyone equally. Help us now, Lord, to embrace this, to live this, and to be this for you. In your son's precious name, we pray it. Amen. And now let's just take a moment to, to raise those silent confessions that we may have. God is slow to anger and full of compassion forgiving all of us who humbly repent and trust in Jesus as Savior and Lord. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are forgiven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us now clear our heads and hearts and minds to witness the word of our Lord. The Old Testament reading today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. Listen for God's word. The whole company of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and they're in the wilderness. The Israelites said, why didn't God let us die in comfort in Egypt, where we had lamb stew and all the bread we could eat? You've brought us out into the wilderness to starve us to death, the whole company of Israel. God said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread down from the skies for you. The people will go out and gather each day's ration. I'm going to test them to see if they will live according to my teaching or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they have gathered, it will turn out to be twice as much as their daily ration. Moses and Aaron told the people of Israel, This evening you will know that it is God who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of God. Yes, he's listened to your complaints against him. You haven't been complaining against us, you know, but against God. Moses said, Since it will be God who gives you meat for your meal in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, it's God who will have listened to your complaints against him. Who are we in all this? You haven't been complaining to us. You've been complaining to God. Moses instructed Aaron, Tell the whole company of Israel, Come near to God, he's heard your complaints. When Aaron gave out the instructions to the whole company of Israel, they turned to face the wilderness. And there it was, the glory of God visible in the cloud. God spoke to Moses, I've listened to the complaints of the Israelites, now tell them. At dusk you will eat meat, and at dawn you'll eat your fill of bread, and you'll realize that I am God, your God. That evening quail flew in and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew all over the camp. When the layer of dew had lifted, there on the wilderness ground was, a f ground was a fine flaky something, fine as frost on the ground. The Israelites took one look and said to one another, What is it? They had no idea what it was. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading today is from Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. And I should note that all three of our readings today are from the translation known as The Message. Philippians chapter 1, 21 through 30. Alive, I am Christ's messenger. Dead, I'm his bounty. Life versus even more life, I can't lose. As long as I'm alive in this body, there is good work for me to do. If I had to choose right now, I hardly know which I would choose. Hard choice. The desire to break camp here and be with Christ is powerful. Some days I can think of nothing better. But most days, because of, because of what you are going through, I'm sure that it's better for me to stick it out here. So I plan to be around a while, companion to you as your growth and joy in this life of trusting God continues. You can start looking forward to a great reunion when I come visit you again. We'll be pr praising Christ, enjoying each other. Meanwhile, Live in such a way that you are a credit to the message of Christ. Let nothing in your conduct hang on whether I come or not. Your conduct must be the same whether I show up to see things for myself or hear it from a distance. Stand united, singular in vision, contending for people's trust in the message, the good news, not flinching or dodging in the slightest before the opposition. Your courage and unity will show them what they're up against. Defeat for them victory for you, and both because of God. There's far more to this life than trusting in Christ. There is also suffering for him, and the suffering is as much a gift as the trusting. You're involved in the same kind of struggle you saw me go through, on which you are now getting an updated report in this letter. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. God's kingdom is like an estate manager who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. They agreed on a wage of a dollar a day and went to work. Later, about nine o'clock, the manager saw some other men hanging around the town square unemployed. He told them to go to work in his vineyard and he would pay them a fair wage. They went. At five o'clock, he went back and found still others standing around. He said, why are you standing around all day doing nothing? They said, because no one hired us. He told them to go to work in his vineyard. When the day's work was over, the owner of the vineyard instructed his foreman, call the workers in and pay them their wages. 
start with the last hired and go on to the first. Those hired at five o'clock came up when we're each given a dollar. When those who were hired first saw that, they assumed they would get far more, but they got the same, each of them one dollar. Taking the dollar, they groused angrily to the manager. These last workers put in only one easy hour and you paid them equal to us who slaved all day under a scorching sun. He replied to the one speaking for the rest, friend, I haven't been unfair. We agreed on the wage of a dollar, didn't we? So take it and go. I decided to give to the one who came last the same as you. Can't I do what I want with my own money? Are you going to get stingy because I am generous? Here it is again, the great reversal. Many of the first ending up last and the last first. The Gospel of Christ, our thanks be to Christ. The blessing of our Lord's word is in the reading, the hearing, the understanding and the living of his word. Blessed be the name of our God, Amen. If the children would like to come a little bit closer to the screen, I have a message for them today. Today I have um, a package of Kit Kats from Japan. And if we take a look at them, they're kind of interesting. Aren't they interesting? These are called Easter Egg Paint Kit Kats. Very different. So today, what I want to do is I want to give a Kit Kat to each one of you. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you each one Kit Kat, but you have to do a couple of things for them. So I would like one of you to mow my lawn I would like one of you to maybe dust the house. The house is dirty. So dust the house. I would like one of you maybe to do a couple of loads of laundry for me. And then I would like somebody to just come and sit down next to me and just be with me. Just hang out. So of these four situations, which one seems unfair. A lot of work mowing the lawn. Like I said, my house is pretty dusty. It'd take a long time to clean my house. And who wants to do laundry? Yuck. Well, the person who gets to sit right down next to me and do nothing sort of gets something more, right? Everybody else had to work really hard for their Kit Kat. The person who sits next to me doesn't have to work that hard at all. And that's what our story is about today from Matthew. Jesus tells the story of a vineyard manager who brings people to work. Some of them start very early in the morning and they work all day long. And then some people come an hour before all the work is over. And guess what? They all get the same they get the same amount. And that's because our God loves us so much that his love and grace are for all of us, no matter what. Whether you work all day long or whether you work for an hour, <laughs> our God loves us so much that we get the same. And aren't we lucky? Because that means that we're forgiven for all the things that we do that aren't so great. So whether you work a really long time and mow my lawn, or whether you just come and sit down next to me, it's a reminder that our God treats us with a kind of love that we're not used to and that we don't know. And isn't it wonderful that we're loved that way? Amen. I'm waiting online at the Port Authority in Manhattan we're all waiting to get on the bus. The fourth floor is jammed. The lines for those waiting for various buses are zigzaggy and confusing, but we all know the drill and so we wait. The bus comes and we start to move. And here he or she comes, you can interchange the gender because it happens often, that someone cuts in front of me on the line. 
because who wants to get on the back of the line? You may not get on the bus if you're on the back of the line. But for me, it's so wrong. How dare you cut in front of me? You just knocked someone off the bus at the end of the line, or maybe you just knocked me off. Do you know this feeling? How about the person who needs to go five miles per hour faster than you on the throughway and cuts you off? You're in the way. You almost feel your blood boil, and the science supports it. Studies have shown that the reward centers of our brains activate when we recognize fairness, even when it pertains to someone else. When we witness unfairness, it triggers our amygdala, the primitive part of the brain that controls fear and anger. This means that when we feel like we've been treated unfairly, we go into a fight or flight mode, which is really resulting in anxiety. Psychologists suggest that when we fight for fairness for others, it's actually some self-interest in disguise, meaning we've recognized it provides us with some type of advantage to be fair. No matter how you slice it, we experience a strong, instant physical and emotional reaction to perceived injustices, and this can limit our ability to think rationally and respond proactively. And let's face it, we know it when we feel it. And when the estate manager in our gospel parable decides to pay all the workers, whether they worked all day in the hot sun or just one hour, the very same wage, well, my amygdala is firing for those earlier workers. I'm a little miffed. And so are the workers in the story. The ones who worked really hard all day long grouse and say, hey, the ones who started working at the end of the day, they should get less. They shouldn't get what we get. We worked for the entire day and these other workers who worked one hour of the day are getting the same pay. And we have some grumbling in our Old Testament lesson today too. Moses and the Israelites are wandering in the desert and they are just grumbling. It's so unfair. The food is bad. The water is non-existent. It would have been better to stay in Egypt because at least while we were being mistreated, we were fed. So there's a lot of grumbling about being treated unfairly today. And I'm sure that you can think of a time when you just felt you weren't being treated fairly or watched others as they weren't being treated fairly either. Well, the psychologists say that there are three things that we all need to consider when we want to handle unfairness as we experience it in our lives. The people who handle unfairness well possess these three things. They catch their emotional response, before it leads to obsessive thinking. They think rationally before they act. And they recognize the difference between what they can control and what they can't control. And I would submit that for us today, as Christians, there is a fourth thing that we recognize. Pastor Carl Jacobson writes that for those of us looking for the true meaning of this parable, we need to start by asking ourselves a very simple question. If you used one word to answer this question, what would it be? The parable of the vineyard is about blank. What? And how would you answer the question? Is it about the unfairness that we experience day in and day out? Is it about injustice that we see happening to others? Or is it about dealing with an unfairness that is a little bit more hidden, a little bit more beneath the surface, a little tougher to decipher, and maybe a bit more difficult for us to admit? If I take a shot at answering my own question, the parable of the vineyard is about deservedness. Now I know I've sort of made that word up, I know it exists, but it feels long-winded. 
But as we reread the parable this morning, it's not about getting caught up with what others receive and the blessings from God that we don't get. The problem, I think, is that they get the same as us. And, well, they don't deserve it. There are those who are less worthy than us. They are last. They are different from us. They are not in our circle. They are the late arrivals to the party. Pastor Jacobson calls them just plain worse sinners than us. They shouldn't get the same that we get, right? Not nothing, maybe, but certainly not the same. So the fourth thing I think that we need to remember as we contemplate getting over unfairness is that our God just isn't like us. And God proves it at every turn in this parable and other parables as well. Our God offers a version of the kingdom that is for everyone. God's grace, God's love, God's generosity is for all and parceled at the same level. All who want to be a part, whether you've enjoyed a relationship with God for many, many years, or whether you did just get to the party. And once again, we are reminded that those who we consider the last, they will be first. In the parable today, the last workers get paid out first. And Jesus continues to twist the old approaches, the old thinking, and the old feelings that we have, and shows us a new inclusive way, a way that brings everyone in and includes all of us so that all of us can enjoy the same wealth, that richness of God's grace and glory right now. Carl Jacobson says it well when he calls all of this a scandal. He says that Jesus continues to remind us that the first will be last and the last will be first. But maybe it's really that the last will be first and the first will be the same. In God's eyes, that's the way it really is. Amen. And now let's prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. This would be the time to go get your elements, um, your juice and your bread Today, uh, we'll be using a hamburger bun. So you'll want to get your elements prepared and ready. Let us pray. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table, with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you and with all of us. We lift our hearts up to the Lord our God and we give thanks to our, the Lord our God, because it's right to give thanks and praise. You have given us life and second birth in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are a people. We are yours. You claimed Israel as your chosen nation and raised up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into your life and power. From worlds apart, you gather us together. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. The bread we break and that the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. O oh God, 
Today you have called us together to be this church. Unite us now at your table and in one loaf and in one common cup. Make us one in Christ Jesus. Let your spirit empower the life we share and ignite our witness in the world. With all who have gone before us, keep us faithful to the gospel teachings and fellowship to the breaking of this bread. Give us strength to serve you until the promised day of the resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church now and forever. And as Christ, our Savior, taught us, we are bold when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, repeat the words of our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On the night that our Lord Jesus was arrested, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the risen Lord's saving death until he comes again. Amen. Friends, this is the bread of life, broken for us, broken for you. Amen. And this, the cup of salvation, shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that we can come to your table and we can come exactly the way we are, the sinners that we are. And we thank you that you cleanse us white as snow. Send us out now, Lord, into your world to deliver the message of love that you've delivered to us. We pray this in your name. Amen. And now, friends, go in peace, remembering to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forever. Amen. God bless and have a great week.